Here we are. I am with a very, very special guest. I brought her on. I met her, oh gosh, it's been about a month now. And she introduced me to, I don't want to call it a device, a tool that I will demonstrate while we're on together today. And it will literally transform a lot of different aspects of your life and your health. So we're going to get into all that. But ladies, so many of you, and I've heard this, I've already heard the complaints. I've already heard the concerns. So many of you are dealing with back pain. You're dealing with incontinence. Yeah, you're peeing when you laugh a little bit too hard. You're dealing with sciatic nerve pain. You're dealing with Zoom pain from sitting here all day long on meetings. So we have the answer for this. And it's going to improve your sex life a little bit too, because I've also heard those complaints about declining libido, declining sex life, sometimes pain during intercourse. And the cooch ball that we are going to be talking about today can help. So this is going to be a game changer for you. And you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction the latest member of the family to the fixer line is Metabolism Fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism. And that might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there. You know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight, add in Metabolism Fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, oh yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form. So you can drink it through your day. It's going to flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some Metabolism Fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. So let me introduce my guest first before we dive into this very interesting conversation. So Miss Jana Danielson, she is an award-winning wellness entrepreneur who through her own experience with physical pain turned her mess into a message, which has now become her mission. She is an Amazon international best-selling author, founder of Lead Pilates and Lead Integrated Health Therapies and the Meta District, her online wellness community. Jan is the host of Medicine of Mindset Summit and member of the Holistic Leadership Council. She's the creator of the Cooch Ball that we're going to be talking about today, the world's first patented pelvic floor fitness tool for women. Jana has coached and consulted with tens of thousands of women from all over the world to help improve their quality of life, their confidence, and their impact in this world. Miss Jana, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to have you on. Dr. Amy, we're going to have a great conversation. I know the couple of times that we've connected, there's just been like this sparkly sisterhood here. So I'm excited to be here in your community today. There definitely is. So 
for those of you watching, you're actually going to get to see what the cooch ball looks like. And as we are on today, and Janet's going to walk you through how to use it, but when we're walking through, I am going to be sitting on it. So I'm going to place this where it should be. And I know it is only for a couple of minutes, Jana, but I'm going to get comfy here and see how mm -hmm. long I can go. And we're going to get into the benefits. So you invented and patented the cooch ball. Tell us about your story. Pain to purpose is always why most of us are here because of that. So tell us your story and then let's let's get into the nitty gritty of this amazing ball that I am now sitting on. Yeah. I mean, I had a pain gift and it, it came to me in my late teens and, and early twenties. And as a farm kid growing up in Saskatchewan, we just did what we normally do. You weren't feeling good. You went to the doctor, you took your medication, you got better, right? That was the series of events. This was not quite the case for me. And so in my pain journey, I moved from my small farming community to the bigger city to go to university. And I found a doctor who initially thought that it was gastric reflux. And because my dad, as a farmer, would have a lot of stress in his life everywhere with the rolls of Tums anti-acid, right? And it was, it became, it became more than that. My pain wasn't just when I had a big exam or was going for a job interview, my pain actually started to happen every single day. And for those of you who live in pain, you know that it actually doesn't matter where the pain in your body is, the entire, the entirety of who you are responds, right? Your posture responds, your breathing responds, your circulation responds, your just elimination and all of that, it, it, it responds because it's protecting you. My pain was digestive in nature. And because of that, you know, my pelvic floor became very tight because of my pain I was holding, unbeknownst to me, I was holding. I was told about two and a half years into my pain journey, one, I was already on 11 different medications and some medications just kind of were on the list because they were helping with the side effects of the medications that were higher up on the list that my team of clinicians believed that the pain was in my head that I was seeking attention and they wished me a nice life. And it actually felt like someone was like cutting, you know, that, that game show where you can, you know, you want to be a millionaire, you can call a friend or ask the audience, right? You, you right. have your lifelines. It felt like my lifeline was just chopped. And I was like, okay, now what? Like the white coat and the stethoscope that I believed, grew up believing were the answers to the ailments that you ended up getting wasn't an option for me anymore. And I did, I did go into a bit of a, of a depression and really became a shell of who I was. And through that discovered after seeing Madonna on the cover of a fitness magazine in the fall of 1999, material girl herself, it was, the article was all about Pilates. And I was like, what is Pilates? And that for me was a turning point. I started to understand that simple techniques like breathing, because I wasn't, I was, I was not breathing properly. I was not moving my body properly, even though I was teaching fitness to pay for my tuition, I was not sitting or standing properly. And it didn't make sense to me that those simple, just that simple knowledge could actually create such turmoil in, in a body. And once you started to kind of, it's like spring cleaning, once you started to organize things and, and reteach the body, and of course it played into my mindset. So that's really why I became so passionate, healing my own pain. People started noticing, you know, I fell in love with Pilates, wanted to learn more, shifted my career from corporate executive leadership development to wellness entrepreneurship, because I just wanted to help those people who like me maybe fell through the cracks or weren't taken seriously the first time around. Yep. And everything that you said, my audience has experienced and I experienced in conventional medicine. It's that medical gaslighting where you honestly believe that there's something wrong with you. And it's maybe it is all in my head. Maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe I can be doing something differently or more. And it really comes down to the simple answers that we need to stop band-aiding symptoms and we need to get to literally the root cause of the issue. And so your root cause was very simple. You weren't moving properly. You weren't breathing properly. And even as you say this, Jana, I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, I don't breathe properly at all. Unless I'm in yoga, you know, when I'm doing yoga or my random meditation that I actually throw in. 
when I'm sitting here working, I am not breathing properly. I'm doing the shallow breaths that we all do all day long. And it really kind of just you saying that impacted me to think, wow, something so simple can make such a big difference in someone's body. So yeah, thank you for sharing your journey because I know so many people can relate that are listening to this, even in their own thyroid and hormone journey, and then expanding into female health, pelvic health, gut health, pain. I mean, it can, we can keep going with, with that experience as well. So how did the cooch ball come about that I'm sitting on how right did the now? Cooch ball come to be? Yeah. You know, it was, it's one of those, it was one of those Jerry Maguire moments, like where, you know, you had me at hello. I realized early on in my teaching that people, a lot of women don't realize their pelvic floor is a part of their core. When, you know, when you think to yourself, I got to strengthen my core, we think crunches and sit-ups and planks, right? Because our abdominals are taught to us as that is our core. However, our core actually is three-dimensional. Yes, there's the four different abdominals that create this 360 degree cylinder, but there is a floor and there is a ceiling, which a lot of us don't understand. So the floor is actually the pelvic floor, the group of muscles that holds our organs up inside of us that gives us the function to be able to control our peeing and our pooping because there is fecal incontinence as well. If we think urinary incontinence isn't talked about, <laughs> fecal incontinence is like light years away from, from ever being talked about, but it actually is a real thing. What I would teach in my workshops or seminars that I would do is the importance of the breath because the diaphragm, which is the main muscle of respiration, it sits like an open umbrella or a mushroom cap in the rib cage. The diaphragm and the pelvic floor have a direct relationship to each other. So when there is an absence of breath, when as you know, teenage women, young adults, when we're trying to make our waist as narrow as it can be, put on you know the tightest jeans, wear those waist trainers because we're told, you know, the hourglass is what we need. You know, that's the epitome of beauty and fitness. Yet it creates such havoc in the in the abdomen there's this interabdominal pressure that we have all this stuff we have organs and we have blood and we have tissues well where does it where does it go i did some work with a urogynecologist from reno nevada his name was dr bruce crawford and his research showed that in 90 percent of pelvic floor dysfunction cases it really wasn't medical in nature but it was movement slash fitness in nature and i was like okay wait wait a minute. That's what I do. That's my jam. I teach people how to move better, how to, you know, live their activities of daily living with more energy and vitality and not think, well, there's another birthday candle on that cake. So therefore I should expect eventually, right. To have the extra weight and to have a lack of energy and to have some peeing when I cough or sneeze. And that really is, is not the case. And so as a Pilates instructor, knowing the world of fascia, so in our body, we have connective tissue called fascia, which really impacts the ability for oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood to get to those fibers of muscles anywhere in the body, your bicep, your hamstring, your pelvic floor. So when there is tension, there is a fascia and muscle should glide like a little kid going down a water slide. The reality is fascia and muscle sticks like the stickiest Velcro, you, you know, you try and get it apart. And when that happens, think of like a boa constrictor snake. That's what the fascia does to every single muscle fiber. It wraps, it constricts, and it does not allow that blood flow to come into that part of the body. So just like a plant, you need sunlight, you need water for a plant to flourish, our muscles are not going to flourish and eventually they're going to atrophy, which means die because they don't have the nutrition they need to live. So many of us have probably used a foam roller or maybe a tennis ball on a, you know, a knot in our shoulder that we try and work out. That brings blood flow, that brings healing to that part of the body. So my challenge was how do I get blood flow to that area? How do I go beyond the Kegel? Because the Kegel is important 100%. But breathing on its own is only part of the equation. If this was a formula, we only have one side of the equation. We have to create the environment for change. So before the breathing can really be impactful to create the, the function, we have to create the environment for change. And that's where the cooch ball came in. I was like, what could I do to create blood flow in that area that wouldn't require, I'm a huge proponent of pelvic floor physical therapy, 
you know, there is that form of, there's a specificity in, in, in physiotherapy where you can go in, get an internal examination and a therapist can help to release tight muscles or get weak muscles to kind of fire up again. I wanted something that could respond in conjunction with that, or someone could do on their own in the comfort of their own home. And the cooch ball was born. I'm the mom of three boys. So back when I was developing this, my boys were much younger and I just went down to their toy box. They had these little mini basketballs and they had hockey balls and they had all these. And then it was kind of like the three bears. Some were way too hard. Some were way too soft. I didn't find one that was just right with what I wanted to do with the body. And so I was like, I'm going to make it. And I did. This ball is, it looks like a ball you could buy in a department store, but the magic of what happens is what's inside. What you don't see is the patented nylon layer that is built for a woman's body to be on the ball so that for that three minutes, we work up to three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. In that moment, we're creating the release of the in the fascia that allows that oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood to get to those muscles. And then we focus in on using the diaphragm to breathe. So that pelvic floor literally relaxes as you inhale and it rises or comes away from the ball as you exhale. So there's this beautiful jellyfish type movement that matches your breath, that reteaches these neural networks in the brain how to start to gain more function back in that area of our body. And I have to say it is different. I mean, yes, to look at it, oh yeah, I can go down to my kid's toy box. I can, whatever. No, you can't. This is totally different. And with my back pain, I have tried it all. I've tried the foam rollers. I've tried the balls. I've tried the tools. There is something different about this ball. And I will say when you first sent it to me, the very first place I used it was on my butt because I had horrific sciatic pain at that point in time. Like it was like, you were sending me like an angelic gift. They just appeared at exactly the right time. So I rolled on it just on my upper glutes and it just feel the fascia breaking up. It's totally different than any other roller or ball or whatever you've used before. So I can completely see the the patented part of this because it's it's completely different. Because I am type A and I've now been on it for about 10 minutes, can we do it too much? Should I should I get off my cooch ball right now? Can we do it too much? You won't do harm, okay? But it's like the law of diminishing returns, right? Eventually you hit a point where it's not helping as much. And if you have the extra time, if you were on a Zoom call, like one of the things I do with mine is I use it as a posture reminder. So I'll sit on my ball sometimes. Sometimes when I'm sitting, I just put it between my knees. So it helps my, you know, my alignment of my hip, knee and ankle. Sometimes I'll place it just kind of at my bra strap behind me. And it reminds me to sit up tall. So I I do use my ball for a long duration throughout the day, I'm just not sitting on it all the time. Mm-hmm. If you don't have to be on a Zoom call, if you're or if you're listening and your camera's off, I get down on the floor. Ladies, like I use this. So the psoas muscle is our, our part of our hip flexors. Okay. So if you sit a lot during the day, and let me tell you this, if you if you are a side sleeper and you sleep with your knees bent, you're basically still in a seated position all night long. So for some of us, we could be in this position for 18, 19, 20, like 20 hours out of our 24 hour day, because we also sleep that way. Mm -hmm. Our psoas becomes shorter, it becomes tighter. And what happens is when something at the front of the body is impacted, the partner at the back of the body is also going to respond. So that's where we see a lot of some sciatic pain, hamstrings getting shorter, chronic low back pain, really tight hips. We actually can even start feeling more bloaty in our body. So I use my cooch ball like last night we were watching a episode of Yellowstone. I was on my mat and I was just working through my gut because for me, my gut issues are always, always bloating, always, always. And I've been traveling, right? So I'm a little puffier than I normally am. The cooch ball in its most impactful state has a little bit of squish to it. Can you see that it's not totally jacked up with air and it comes with a pump so you can take some air out. But I spent time just laying on my tummy, working through I actually did. I'm going to stand up for this. I worked through from my psoas. I did my ascending, my transverse and my descending colon. And -hmm. then I was just under my belly button for a little while. And it actually makes a big 
difference even to gut health. You know, you can, if you have jaw discomfort, you can lay on it. If you, I like laying on that saddlebag area because this melts through, like you guys, cellulite is fascial tissue that is puckered to the outermost layer of our skin. All right. What we need to do is take those fat cells that are stuck in that fascia, melt through the tissue, and then use that as energy, right? Like that's what fat is. It's energy just waiting to be used. Yes. Sometimes it gets stuck in the fascia in a really, a really, really like impacted way. So this is not just a one trick pony, even though it is meant for us to get more connected into that part of our body. You can use it really head to toe. I love that. I love that because so many of my listeners have gut issues too. Bloat is a big, big factor. And sometimes you can find the cause and sometimes you can't. And just to think that it may be connected to tight muscles. And yes, I, I have and have had tight psoas muscles where I've tried to get in there like with the medicine balls at the mm -hmm. gym and they're too big and they won't get in. And lady, for you guys listening, it's basically kind of between your belly button and your hip bone. If you dig right in there and you have to kind of go through the front of your body, that is the psoas muscle. I, I notice it the most when I'm, let's say, doing like a, a bridge in yoga and I put my hands there and I touch, it's like, oh, I, I am lit up with pain because that is, it's so tight and it's tighter on one side than the other because of how we sit and the twisting of the rib cage and your hips being off. This ball is like the perfect size for that area where no other tennis ball is too small, medicine ball is too big, and you release that. And then, like you said, Jenna, all of a sudden you have better posture too. So not only is it helping to break up the cellulite, when we have better posture, we look better. Mm. I mean, you know, you just think of someone, and I see this a lot more with our youth, like young girls now, I think because of working and hunched over on their phones. They're walking over hunched over these beautiful young girls who should be standing tall with their shoulders back and their chest out and not boobs first kind of thing, but just a good posture. They look 10 times more gorgeous when they're standing up straight rather than hunched over like an 80 year old. So even in, in aesthetics, better posture is going to make you look thinner. It's going to make you feel more confident. And I know that that's one of your goals as well with women is just building up that confidence. Well, and it's, it's helping women. I, I feel like, you know, women in our age bracket, we really give of ourselves, right? So we, whatever we choose, we, we go to school, we start our careers, we're giving, giving, giving. And then some of us choose to, you know, have families and we're giving again. And then you reach that point where you're like in your forties and fifties, where you're like, I don't even remember <laughs> What kind of what kind of pizza do I actually like? Not what everybody else in my family actually likes. And so when you can have confidence, I feel like confidence and clarity go hand in hand. And sometimes it's just we're we're just missing that. And I use the word sparkle a lot. We we start to we start to lose that. When you can reconnect with the body and connect the dots, like what is actually happening? You, you mentioned like when you're when you're sitting and standing properly, we live on a planet with gravity. When we have our bones in the right place, guess what happens, ladies? Our muscles are working to hold our bones there. So you want to talk about, I can sit here on a Zoom call and I can be two inches shorter and I can feel the tissues kind of folding in and around my abdomen. Or like I said, I can put my cooch ball behind me or really focus on sitting up straight and to hold my spine in that position, to hold my head in that position. I do have to feel my my core active, not like I would if I was punching it out at the gym, right. but it's actively holding me there, which impacts our ability to breathe. It impacts when we breathe. I was going to mention this earlier. We we're talking about breathing. We take in 600% more oxygen when we breathe with our diaphragm, 600%. So you want to talk about a quick hack for brain fog, a quick hack for just that, you know, when, when we feel tired, our eyes kind of get really sinewy and sink into the back of our head. We just look exhausted, yet we had a great night's sleep. You guys, we're an oxygen deprived system. All right, oxygen. And I, I think you just saw Dr. Amy take a sip of water, hydration wow. and oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. If we could just make those two little shifts, it would drastically change the systems in our body. I agree. I agree. And sometimes it is, it's, it's those little things. And I try to drive that point home to my audience, especially when we are talking about kind of outside of the box topics mm -hmm. that everyone thinks 
more hormones, more thyroid medication, more dieting, more supplements. And it's like, while all those things can help, we have to come back to the basics sometimes. Sometimes it is that you're eating too little protein. Sometimes it is that you're not breathing enough. Sometimes it is that you're not taking enough water. Those simple things can make such a huge difference in your life. And when you were talking about pain, how often do I hear my patients say to me, well, you know what? I can't go lift heavy shit like you want me to because I'm in pain. My knees hurt, my back hurts. I get migraines. I'm just in pain all the time. So if we can release that pain, Mm -hmm. even by 50%, I mean, that's 50% more motivation and energy and strength that you will have to go do a workout that will then give back in droves because now with proper working out and with lifting heavy shit. Now you have better muscle structure. Now you have protection against osteoporosis. Now you have just a better aesthetic look about you. So it all works together. That's why I love this talking to you today. And that's why I love the cooch balls because it does just because, you know, you hear, oh, they're going to be talking about pelvic health and incontinence and sex. No, this this goes so much further beyond that. And it does go into your overall health and your overall appearance and your overall day-to-day feel and quality of life as well. Well, you know, let me just give your community a sense of just the, the longevity of this. So I've had moms buy this product for like their 10, 11 year old daughters who are wetting the bed and are want to go, you know, to the birthday sleepovers, but just will not put themselves in a position where they might have an accident. You guys, that's a pelvic floor issue. I had a a woman from New York city call me. It's probably about two years ago now. And her husband was turning 91. And she said to me, Jana, I saw your product. I saw that men can use it too. And she said, it's his birthday. He's not as spunky as he used to be in the bedroom. So this is, this is a gift almost more for me than for him. And so I just, it's, it's not just meant for women who are in menopause, or if you've just had a baby, you know, men, 90% of erectile dysfunction is a tight pelvic floor. There Mm -hmm. is pelvic floor therapy for men. There's one way in and that's through the anus. That's the only way that we can get to the pelvic floor in a male's body. However, one or two treatments will usually, you know, do the trick for a guy. There is what I call the ouch factor when you start on the cooch ball. So there's this grandiose, you know, you get your, you're so excited to get your cooch ball and you sit on it. And then it's like, oh, that, okay, that hurts. Right. And here's what I say to that. The ouch factor is a direct relationship to the health of that part of your body. If those tissues are not healthy, the ouch factor is going to take you through the roof. That's where your breath gets to be your guide. When you can keep breathing diaphragmatically in through your nose and out through your mouth in a very calm way, you stay as soon as your breath gets a little erratic or you start holding your breath, that's where you come off the ball. And then maybe, or maybe tomorrow you do that, but you sit on your, on your mattress or you sit on your couch mm-hmm. when you use the cooch ball and it's, it's reframing the pain. All right. You really are a pain seeker when you're using this ball, when you use it, Dr. Amy, when you were using it for your sciatica and you used it on your glute, was there a little bit of ouch factor there? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. There was more ouch factor on the sciatic than it is with me sitting on it today. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. But you knew that if you got off of the ball, that, that that would change it, right? That's the thing is we we become so conditioned to be frozen by pain that we're like, oh my gosh, what it, that 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 causes me pain. I'm just I'm going to choose to do nothing, right? Because I don't. I'm scared of that pain. I want to encourage everyone here to start to think radically different about that. It's like a communication system in your body. And yeah, sometimes you need to be on medication to at least get you to the point where you can start to heal, but the body is brilliant. And if you give it the basics that it needs in conjunction with, you know, the other advice you're getting from your medical practitioners, magic can really happen. And I've seen it. I've seen it happen over and over and over is when we flip the switch on our mind because sometimes we get so attached to that pain that we become it. Yeah. What would my life be without that pain? Would people still give me the attention that I'm getting? And trust me, I've had it, right? I've I've had the pain diagnosed with SIBO three years ago, right? So I, and I've played that card before where I'm like, oh, it's the SIBO, right? But what does it mean to take control over that discomfort, identify it, acknowledge it, not ignore it and be like, oh, hey, there you are. Can I keep breathing through this or do I have to come off today? 
right? Yep. That's what it is. Yep. Just listening to your body. So, okay. I want to go into the placement of this. And mm-hmm. then I want to talk incontinence because I, I found it interesting when I heard you speak before we had, you had a question from a woman that was scheduled for the mesh surgery for incontinence. And I mean, we had a, we had a surgeon speak up and go, ah, don't do that. So this is a viable alternative to surgery for incontinence. So first of all, placement, it goes yeah. between. So when I stand up and I sit on this thing, it's literally going between my vagina and my anus, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Here we go again. We're going to do it because when I was on it, I felt better. Like at the beginning of our conversation, I felt like my posture and my lower back felt better. And then I took it out and I was like, ew, yeah. I don't like how I feel sitting here. So I'm going back on the cooch ball. So that's the placement of it. Sounds a little weird, but that, I mean, when you, when you start sitting on it, it's like nothing. It's like in its perfect little location, pretty much. It's like where it's meant to be. And so let's talk about the incontinence factor because so many ladies are listening. And I know many have experienced this when I used to power lift and really go heavy. I had to wear a pee pad. I call, I mean, it was just a regular period pad, but I I had to stick that in my pants because I would end up peeing when I would deadlift. And I know many women avoid jump rope and avoid running and avoid laughing because pee is going to come out. So how can this help? Okay. So let's, let's get the landscape of incontinence. So There can be, well, when a pelvic floor in general is too tight, okay, we call it hypertonic. It's like if you give your kids sugar, they get hyper, there's too much activity. So hypertonic, too tight. On the other end of the spectrum, it's hypotonic, H-Y-P-O, so lacking tone, all right? Incontinence can happen on either end of the spectrum and anywhere in between. So when a pelvic floor is too tight, and this is where in in a lot of cases, Kegels can actually exacerbate a pelvic floor situation because how are we taught to do a Kegel? We're taught to stop the flow of urine, right? Squeeze and then start the flow of urine and stop the flow of urine and start the flow of urine. Yet you don't need to know a lot of intricacies about the body to know that if I were to pick up my water bottle to take a sip, right? My bicep is going to be working through this range of motion and then through the range of motion to put the bottle down. It's not going to turn on and off like a light switch. So why do we, why do we train the pelvic floor that way? It's an easy, people know what that means. Stop the flow of urine. Oh yeah, that's what I do. Start the flow of urine. But beyond that, it doesn't give much as far as function. And for the women that are already too tight there, it creates more and more and more hypertone. So we don't know what relax is. We just get tighter and tighter and tighter. And in those cases, incontinence can happen when we cough or sneeze. There is usually pain during intercourse. There can just be general pelvic floor pain, constipation. At that point, cold, tingly feet, because there's usually a blood flow issue that that's, that's there as well. So that's how incontinence shows itself in a body that has a too tight or hypertone muscle to it. Mm -hmm. We go to the other end of the spectrum. There's not enough tone. There's a lack of tone. So that's where we usually see things like the urge incontinence. All right. And urge is where you just got home from the grocery store. You know, you got your bags of groceries in each hand. You're fiddling with your lock or punching in the code. And you didn't have to go pee two seconds ago but you drop the groceries and you're undoing your pants on the way to the bathroom because all of a sudden it's like now, like right now. And that's, you know, that's what we tend to see when there is hypotone or a lack of tone. There also can be some incontinence, of course, when, when you cough or sneeze with, with a lack of tone as well. So what we want to create is a group of muscles that is functional. Every muscle in our body should know when to rest and when to work. And I would argue that when we lay on the couch tonight, maybe to watch that episode of wherever we're watching, just because we are at rest and not moving does not mean that our body is rest 
full. Okay. Your neck could still be jacked up. Your little masseter muscles, because you've been clenching your jaw all day, might still be on fire. You might lay down and 10 minutes into relaxing, that's when your back fires up and you're like, wait, but I'm laying down. <laughs> Shouldn't you be resting? Yep. But we've conditioned those muscles because we've been on Zoom calls kind of with a big, the big, big overarch in our back, or we've had the poor posture. We've been slinging our purse over our shoulder for decades or carrying our kids on one hip. All those memories stick with us. The health of that part of our body, how do I want to say this? It's an inside out strategy. You're not going to actually see it. You're not going to actually feel it for a while. The first thing you're going to feel coming off your ball is a sense of warmth and tingliness. Some women don't experience that for two, three, four weeks because that's how hypertonic they are. But when you do start feeling that warm, tingly, that is blood flow. So that's how your body's telling you, you're there, girl, you are getting there, right? There's less ouch factor. You're able to stay on it for longer. So you really start to create this relationship with the ball and with your body. Your body's like, thank God, finally, finally, she's listening, right? Right. You know, and you talked about lifting. And if a lot of your audience is 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 into lifting and fitness, I worked with a woman who was in the master's division in CrossFit, and she was a global competitor. She had finished third multiple times. And that's one of the things she came to, you know, came to see me for. She's like, we just, that's just what we do, right? Like when we compete, there's just pee on the floor when yeah. we're doing anything that is requiring us to lift up or, you know, the double unders, anything like that. And within six weeks, ladies, I had her reconnected to that part of her body and she actually found more strength in her core because now she was using, remember I told you it was a cylinder. It was a round cylinder with a roof and a floor. Yep. She wasn't using her floor at all. The floor was just like flapping in the wind. And when she learned to under, understand how to activate that, her entirety of how she performed changed because she was getting that support. Yep. I can totally see that. I can see that because that's where your strength comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, when you just kind of almost bear down, like you hear in childbirth, but bearing down during a heavy deadlift or heavy squat, I mean, that helps with the strength and it helps push that oxygen up and it gives you that explosive movement. So I can totally see that. Now you had mentioned earlier too about pain during intercourse. And I want to touch on that because mm -hmm. we're kind of tying this all together from a, a variety of different comments that you've made, getting blood flow to the area. So we connected it to guys having erectile dysfunction, but we can also connect it to ladies who are not, maybe they're experiencing low libido, they're not getting the blood flow to the area. So libido and pain during intercourse, again, we're coming back to a potential other answer. No, it might not be that you need more testosterone. I have seen labs that are perfection and the women are still saying, but I have no libido. And I'm like, well, you either need a husbandectomy or you need to do something else because it's not your testosterone. It's not your thyroid. It's not your estrogen. It's not your progesterone. It's not your DHEA. So it's nothing that we're seeing on the labs whatsoever. There's another reason why you don't want sex, why you're not getting that tingly fun feeling down there. Okay, yeah. So let's let's unpack this a little bit. So first of all, I want to just chat a little bit about that the the tingly feeling because there's there the the feeling goes from pain to pleasure, right? So the the main nerve that runs from our brain to that area is called the pudendal nerve. And it's both a motor nerve and a sensory nerve, which means it's a communication highway. And it means it creates sensations that the, the pain to pleasure. The, the Latin root of pudendal means ashamed. Oh, okay? yeah, we did not show. Yeah. So like, let's, let's just take a moment. I just want to say that again. So the Latin root word of pudendal means ashamed. And we wonder sometimes there's always an energetic, like there's, you know, there's the physicality of wellness, there's the emotionality of wellness, there's the energetics and the spirituality, and that's really what makes us who we are. And we can ignore the other pieces and focus on physical, or that's maybe what people just want their physical pain to be gone. But when you start to, it's like a seven layer Mexican dip, when you start to get, you know, past the cheese into the refried greens and the, and the guacamole, there's something new there to experience, right? And so we come with this energy of ashamedness in that area, which for some of us, you may have experienced trauma in that area. And we hold on to that for a long, long time. 
Well, and, and trauma can come in lots of different ways. It can be through childbirth. It can be through, you know, inappropriate sexual touching, or it can come through too much too soon, as Dr. Amy uh, Apigian talks about, or, or not enough for too long. There can just be all these kinds of traumas. And our root chakra is the, is the energy center, this little whirling vortex of energy that creates safety and a, a sense of rooted connectedness, groundedness. And when we are so bound in that area, and we don't even know it, right? 2% of our brain is conscious, 98 is subconscious. We may not even realize it. That can be perpetuating, you know, the pain during intercourse. I did have a client. I want to share a story. She was a young teacher. She was a Highland dancer all through her childhood and into her teenage years, newly married for six months, came to see me in tears. She said, Jana, I'm afraid that I'm going to my marriage. I, I don't know how my marriage can last. She said, I let, in her words, on Wednesday nights, I let my husband, I think she used the word buck. I let him buck. And starting on Tuesday, I start getting anxiety and I start getting pain because I know how much it's going to hurt. But I know if I don't allow it to happen, I may lose him. And then I still am in pain on Thursday. So she said, I live my Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and then Tuesday to Thursday is basically just, I am so uptight because I know how much it's going to hurt. So with her, it was, we had to do lots of, you know, deconstructing of what was going on in her life. But from a physical perspective, she was just getting no blood flow to that area. She was not breathing properly. It was all, and she was a Highland dancer. You guys, you've seen river dance, right? Yeah. Their upper bodies are so stoic and their legs are just going. There's so much core activation. So we had to undo a lot of that about three to four months after she started seeing me, she was, they were pregnant with their first baby and she was able to regain that confidence in her own body. Cause she felt it was her, it was her body that was not able to serve the relationship like she wanted it to, you know, that's, that's the whole pain part. That's one of the ways we look at pelvic floor pain and discomfort, because let's be honest, when we're feeling sensual and sexual it does play into our confidence and our ability to show up in different ways. We just feel good about ourselves. And so I've had lots of great results with the cooch ball when women have chosen to use it from that part of their health and wellness. Right. Yeah. And that just might be a little bonus that you experience. You know, you go in it for the incontinence or the pain aspect, and then sex gets better because you do have more blood flow and you do have more confidence. So it's it, like you said, it's, like a Mexican layer dip. There's the confidence, there's the blood flow, there's the, just the pain aspect when you reduce a woman's pain during intercourse. Oh my God. Yeah, of course, because we're so much mental. So just like you shared with your, about your client, even just that build up fear that she experienced knowing what was to come, even if the pain, like she anticipated a pain of 10, but hey, the pain was only four this week. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. because she was anxious about it for two days beforehand. And that's going to create inflammation and that's going to disconnect her from even possibly enjoying the moment, even if she could. So there, yeah, you're right, Jen, there's so many layers. There's so many layers, but the bottom line is, is that this can help. It can help. It can help. And it's simple. Like, I don't want to say easy because- but it's, it's about the ease and the simplicity. I think sometimes when it comes to our health and wellness, we search for the drama. We search for the complicated because that's what we think we need, right? Mm -hmm. And if we just stopped for a moment and remembered this beautiful body, we were born with all, everything we needed, we were born with. We didn't, you know, we didn't come with the extra set of knees or the extra set of hips, right? That some of us end up having to get in our, in our lifetime. Right. So what if we just started to understand this beautiful being in a different way? And what if we loved it in a different way? And instead of looking in front of the mirror and pointing out all the things that we don't love or wish we could change, you know, what if we just put, flip that on its head a little bit and see what happens? Mm -hmm. I love that. It's kind of a mic drop of an end, but... 
I'm still going to keep talking and build the plan. Yeah. I didn't yeah. pay Jana to say that at all. I think I actually might take that <laughs> phrase and run with it, Jana. Uh, the, oh, now see, I'm going to have to re-listen to our interview. It, looking for the drama. I, and and I, I want to circle back to that because that really does apply to many of my listeners and even my patients that all y'all think that you're a tough case. And you almost look for the drug. Well, I must have mold toxicity and heavy metals and E. coli and a gut infection and and 10 different other things. It's like I go, no, you just have a low thyroid and like no testosterone. We do those two things and you're pretty much golden. It's like they they do, they look for the drama. So I love how you say that because it it, it applies to so many other areas of our life. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I could mic drop on that, but no, that was, that know, was brilliant. But I, I just, but I think that's what society has perpetuated, right? Because we see the beautiful side of people's lives when we're scrolling through Instagram feeds, but then we'll see the commercials of, you know, the, the lady in the fancy business suit that is, that has her depends on, or the big, you know, the big construction workers. And, and we're normalizing all of these things yet when when you get to the when you get to the root of it we we're we're like a, you know we're like these palm trees behind me we need sunlight we need water we need some sort of nutrition we need the wind to move us a little bit we need right and so if we can move beyond that diagnosis and you know what dr google has made us think that we have and then we then we become that right i just yeah, I'm a huge fan of just taking a step back and and it's just the simplicity of it all. This has been 10 times better of a conversation than I could have even anticipated because we went in so many different directions, even pulling in mindset. I mean, just what you, what you just said, what you just said, I mean, that, that's on point. And that is exactly how we, especially women, I'm not leaving out the guys, but especially women, we, we do the comparison game. And we do that with our bodies and we do that with our lives and we do it with our kids and with our job and with our fashion and with our hair and our hair color and our makeup and our boobs and our waist and our butt. And we look at Kim Kardashian and we look at every Photoshopped image on Instagram and we compare. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that you brought that aspect in as well. This has been just jaw dropping. Amazing. Absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And I, I want to touch on something too, just for the listeners you do have multiple videos on how to use this. So even though I'm sitting here talking about me putting it between my anus and my vagina, I don't want to freak anybody out. You take people through. And if they're sitting there going, what the hell is diaphragmatic breathing? You take people through. You actually have videos that go along with the purchase of the go of the cooch ball. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it is, it's a full, it's a full experience. It does come with a little postcard with a quick start guide. But it's important. I always, I mean, there are going to be those women that are going to be like those A types that are like, nope, I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to sit on it and I'm good. And that's, and that's great, right? You can do that. There's that. That's what the postcard is there for the quick start. However, the course, actually, there's two courses that come with the ball. It's one is called create your pelvic floor upgrade. And that's for us girls. And then because we may have special guys in our life. I also did a course called Gooch Power, which my husband, Jason, is on with me on that course. And the education piece, I feel, is like the roots, all right? If you really make the time to watch the course so that I can help you have those aha moments so that you can optimize your experience on the ball, then that's just going to, it's gonna, I always say, we need moments to create momentum. So moments back to back to back create that momentum, right? And I have some women literally within two or three times on their cooch ball will start to notice a difference. Some take more, but that's what the education piece is all about. I think sometimes we just want, we feel like we just want, just give me the Coles notes. Just what, what do I need to know, <laughs> you know, to drive this car? Well, you stick the key in the ignition and you turn it, right? You could do that, or you could spend a little bit of extra time and really understand what are the nuances of the body, right? Because going back to the, what we talked about with diaphragmatic breathing, I mean, even just those of you who are listening, if you're watching or if you're, you know, what listening and, and driving right now, you can do a little test of your pelvic floor. Should we do that, Dr. Amy? Just really yeah, let's quickly. do it. Let's do, let's it. do it. 
So let's, first of all, just acknowledge we do have a pelvic floor, just as if you were going to stop the flow of urine and then let that go. All right. So the, let's just, that was just our little, you know, mic check, 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 and your mic is working. All right. So now let's really understand the nuance. When we breathe in through our nose, take in air, the lungs fill, the diaphragm muscle, that little mushroom cap muscle has to contract. It has to duck out of the way. When the diaphragm does that, the pelvic floor also kind of follows. Think of the diaphragm as like a little, a long smiley face, okay, when you're breathing in. And then the pelvic floor also descends. So as the diaphragm kind of melts down into our body to get out of the way of the lungs, the pelvic floor also descends, all right, lowers. When we exhale, so when we're lifting our baby in a bucket seat, when we're lifting weights at the gym, when we're helping, you know, we're, we're doing spring cleaning and we're moving things out of the garage into the yard. When we exhale and lift, the lungs empty. Now there's room for that diaphragm to go back to its mushroom cap shape, right? It's it's in its, its more relaxed position then. And the pelvic floor contracts, it, it lifts, all right? So sometimes what I'll say to women is when you're exhaling, imagine like you're picking up a grape with your vagina. Imagine like there's a little elevator inside your body that there's this beautiful, soft, nuancy lift. And then as you inhale, that grape descends or the elevator descends. And it's this very, it's like a wave-like sensation in our body so that when we're breathing properly with our diaphragm, the pelvic floor gets like a little poke, like, oh, my best friend up there, she's working. I should also be working. So when you're, when you're driving, when you're sitting at work, it's just a really nice way to do a little check-in with that part of our body. It's it's a very empowering part of our body. And I think sometimes we think we need to force it or, uh, right? And it's actually in the beautiful, just the subtlety is, is where the power lies. That's like a dance. I'm doing it right now. For those of you not, for those of you looking at me, you're probably <laughs> like, oh, she's doing it. She's doing her little breathing and pulling the, 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 grape up her vagina yes. but yeah it's 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 like a dance it's you can feel it when you actually pay attention to it about with the rise and the fall like you described it, it's a beautiful dance it is a beautiful dance and I think and, and more women need to step up and and join the dance instead of buying into I'm like, I keep pointing at my tv you know buying into those commercials or believing that a pad is not a solution a pad is a symptom masker, right? Like it just, it doesn't, it doesn't get to the right. root cause. Well, even worse, a pill is not a solution and maybe a surgery is not a solution because how many pharmaceuticals are there out there for incontinence? A lot. And a people lot. are popping the, the Band-Aid pills for that too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? At the end of the day, there's four different levels of prolapse, right? There's level one through level four. So you might have a bad cold or maybe you have seasonal allergies and you're coughing a lot. You could actually have a, a grade one prolapse. And I had a bad cold like maybe 18 months ago. And when I still own my clinic, I had a pelvic floor physical therapist there. And she's she I went, I saw her regularly and she said, hey, you, you have a grade one prolapse. And I was like, what? But it was just from all the interabdominal pressure from coughing and sneezing and coughing and sneezing. Those muscles do get a workout, okay? And so grade one and two, the cooch ball can very much fix, all right? Grade three, that's where there has been a, you know, a pelvic organ, bladder, uterus that has descended or melted down and is right at the opening, the vaginal opening, all right? A grade four is where there is there is an organ living outside of your body at that point, right? So we want to talk about this. Yes, it's a treatment, but it's if, if we could get this into the hands of, you know, women when we can prevent, prevent the sciatica, prevent the dissension of the, you know, of those pelvic organs, have healthy blood flow, have great posture. Wouldn't that be the perfect storm? Definitely. It really would be. Jenny, you've been amazing. You've just been amazing. Like I said, this has been such a better conversation than I even anticipated it being. So, and to top it all off, you have a deal for our listeners that we are going to put in the show notes. Now, if you're listening to this in my Facebook group, Girl Fix Your Thyroid, we broadcast this to you guys first. So if you're not in there, you got to join. But if you're listening, we don't have the code up in the description. You're going to have to check the show notes 
when the podcast releases tomorrow. So Jana, tell us about the deal that you have for my listeners. Yeah. So just because you're part of Dr. Amy's community, I wanted to do something really cool for you. So what I did is I put, and you can't find this on my website. This is just, you got to go to the show notes to get this. All right. So I put together a bundle, which includes the cooch ball, all of the, I'm going to call them the foundational educational materials. And then I'm adding something to it. That's really special. It's called the cooch fix pack mini. It's three 30 minute sessions with me. And one of those sessions focuses on using the cooch ball for upper body um, release work. We go, we get into, you know, TMJ, like the jaw tension, we get into back, back pain, headaches. We even do like an anti-aging one on our face. Then the second 30 minute session is for lower body. So we do get into the psoas, we get into like the IT band, which is a really thick piece of fascia between our hip and our knee, which is responsible for about 80% of knee pain. We get into some calf work because did you know, the calf is considered the secondary heart muscle. So we can really, you know, benefit our, just our wellness from having calves that are not like rocks. We do some work with the feet and then because gut health is so near and dear to me, um, I did a whole 30 minute session on using your cooch ball for promoting gut health. So that's going to come along in the bundle just for you. Wow. I did not even know about that until just now. So that is so amazing. Thank you so much for building that for all of my peeps. I love it. I love it. I like treating them extra special. So I appreciate you jumping in on that. So we're going to have that in the show notes. We're going to have all the links, everything that you guys need. So Jana, tell them where they can find you and we'll take it from there. Okay. So on Instagram, I I just brought together my business Instagram and my personal Instagram. So you're going to go to Jana.Danielson on Instagram. Uh, You can always direct message me through there. The Cooch Ball is on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook as well. And info at coochball.com if you have any questions. And please reach out because one of the reasons that I'm even doing what I'm doing today is I feel like as women, we have this, sometimes we have this duct tape over our lips and we become muted because we feel like no one else is going through this. And it would be really embarrassing to ask the question, please ask the question and let's start the conversation because it might be something again, so simple that just needs a little bit of clarity in your mind and away you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well said. And thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for the amazing deal that you have. And we will put all of her information and all the links in the show notes as well. So Jana, thank you once again. I greatly appreciate your time. Oh, Dr. Amy, thank you for having me. I, um, and just for spreading, you know, this pelvic floor message that I think needs to be shouted from the rooftops. Absolutely. Love it. 